This next video will discuss some of the advanced options in Fantastic, as well as go through each of the menus at the top of your window. Let's start with the File menu. When you click File, you see several options. You can open up a new test, which will have no data in it. You can open up a test that you've already completed by clicking Open and selecting the test file location. Now tests are automatically saved into a location on your drive under your Documents menu. And you'll find a folder called RetroTech. And within that folder, there are templates, logs, reports, and tests. You can save a test at any time during the testing or after the test. And you can also save the test as, which means you can change the name of the test that you're saving, or you can change the location in which you're saving it. Autosave is defaulted to being selected, as you can see by the check mark on the right hand on the left hand side. And autosave just means that this test that you're working on is saved every several seconds. If you don't want autosave on, it could be because you're working on a test, maybe fiddling with the data a little bit, and you don't want to save what you're doing necessarily. With autosave on, if you were to do that and you didn't like what you were entering or you didn't like the changes that you made, it would likely be saved already as those changes. So you can unclick autosave, make the changes, and then close it down if you didn't want to save them. To open up recent tests, all you have to do is select recent tests and many of the tests that you've completed within the recent past will be here as well. So it's another way to open older tests. You can print your report or print this screen and it will basically just print what you're seeing right now on the screen. You can generate a report. This is a Word document that will be generated based on the information that is in this test. And you can also export your data to Excel. So when you do an automatic test, as we saw, it took many readings within each of the points that we see in the building pressure, gauge pressure and the door fan pressure. If you wanted to see each individual point, you could just export your data to Excel and all of those points would be visible. This function is only available to people who have purchased Fantastic. We often release updates every week or every few weeks based on bugs that people might have found or based on new features that we wanted to add. If you're unsure of whether or not an update has been thrown onto the website, all you have to do is click Check for Updates, and it will search the internet and find out whether or not there are updates for this software. Exit will exit out of the program. View will show you the test history. If we click View, a bar sh appears on the left-hand side and shows all the tests that you've done recently. You can click View, Test History, and that will go away. Sets, you can add a new set, which is what we did originally when we wanted to add a depressurization set after we had done a pressurization test. But you can also do that within the test window itself. Tools, options, is where you'll find your main information on which protocol you've selected, perhaps changing a license installation, or adding your username and email. Tools, advanced options, is where you'll find the settings for the test. So the basic settings, again, are where your protocols are, your languages, and your information. Settings, under the Settings menu, will provide you with all the information that you can use to change the way that you take your test. So like I said before, the default protocol for ASTM will appear in your menu when you select it. So when you open up Fantastic and you start a new ASTM test, you don't have to change anything in here. All you have to do is say start auto test and it will start collecting the data based on the ASTM protocol. However, if you're aware of things that you would like to change and you know that they still fall within the ASTM protocol standards, you can change them here. So for instance, let's say it was very, very windy outside and you're getting bias pressure fluctuations of over one pascal when you were taking your 30 second bias pressure you'd likely want to stop your test and select a longer bias pressure, maybe for one minute, maybe even longer. That way you're covering a greater range and you're reducing the amount of bias pressure fluctuation that you can receive in your test. You may also want to take 
your test pressures for a longer period of time, so perhaps a minute each. That way you're getting more accurate data. ASTM requires you to either go in 5 pascal increments or 10 pascal increments or somewhere in between, between 10 and 60. So if you're doing 5 pascal in increments, that would result in taking 11 building pressure measurements instead of 6. So this is something that could be changed. If you're interested in finding different reference pressures, so let's say airflow at 75 pascals instead of airflow at 50, which it's defaulted to, you can change that here. This also works for air changes per hour. Effective and equivalent leakage areas have reference pressures of 4 and 10, respectively. You can change these in this menu as well. On the graphs, you can show averaged points only, so you show only a single point on the graph, or you can show all the readings that have been taken within each point. You also can choose to have Fantastic remind you to cover the fans before taking bias pressures and to uncover the fans afterwards or if you choose to not cover the fans before taking a bias pressure, you can select no here. When you select show calculation warnings, a pop-up will appear if you don't have enough data to compute some of the results. So for instance, if you did not put in a closure volume, you would get a warning that came up that said it could not calculate air changes per hour. Now the warning is just to let you know that that, vol that value is not going to be calculated but the test will still follow through and it won't be uh, invalid if you don't have that information. You just won't have the result of air changes per hour. Now in the applications menu, we have the file path that it's saved to. This is where you will always find your test files. So users, I'm currently working with Graham as the username, documents, and RetroTech folder. This is a new feature that is used mainly for doing research purposes. It's auto-repeat. So you can run a test several times over and over and over until you have all the data that you're looking for. And these are the main features and the main options that you can change in Fantastic. One more thing that you can do with Fantastic is if you were at a client's house and you found some of the leakage areas and you immediately wanted to change and fix some of the leak areas and find out how well that did with regards to air leakage. What you could do is run one test, select a new set, or run another test in the same direction. So right now we have two tests that were run in depressurization mode. And when we come down to the bottom here, we see that this says reduction. So Fantastic is assuming that you have completed one test, fixed the leaks, and completed a second test to determine how much better the air leakage is. In this case, because we did the tests in two different sets, we actually have done much worse. So we've made it worse by 5.9 air changes per hour. However, now we have an air change rate of 5.8. So we've done better by 2.4 air changes per hour. So this completes our walkthrough of Fantastic. Make sure you keep your program updated and happy testing!